While it's important to know what products to place in your studio for acoustical treatment, it's equally important to know where to place them in the room. The area of, of uh, probably prime concern would be the mix area, the area behind your mix position. And so, and the reason for this is because this is where most of your early reflections are going to be coming from. And early reflections uh, cause problems because, as you can see from our mix position here, the engineer would be seated roughly two to three feet from the loudspeakers, and the loudspeakers are going to be reflecting sound off the wall. So this sound is going to arrive at the ear of our engineer at roughly the same time as it is going to be arriving from the speakers. And so this causes cancellation and filtering effects. So if you, the first place to start in your studio would be absorbing the area behind your monitors. And so I would say uh, you'd want to get the first panel dead center between the two monitors, maybe work your way up a little bit, and then uh, if you don't have a lot of foam, this is in a small studio like this, in fact, this would probably be enough if you didn't have a lot of panels to, to, uh, to spread around your room. If you have the luxury, though, of having quite a few panels to mount, it's a good idea to largely dampen this entire wall. Base trapping is uh, probably the, the, the best place to put your base trapping. The, the place to start would be in the upper corners. Two reasons for that. One, that's where most of the low frequency energy tends to congregate in a room. And secondly, especially in a small studio, we don't want to really want to try to avoid taking up a lot of our floor space with uh, additional uh, treatment. So by putting the base traps in the extreme upper corner, we're not really wasting any of the floor space. Now, if you do have a room that's perfectly square, for example, that may require more base trapping. And so in that case, feel free to add more base traps uh, on down all the way to the floor, because that'll certainly pay uh, big benefits uh, sonically in your room. Now, the Leonard base trap can also be installed horizontally. For example, let's say there's a doorway here. We can turn it sideways uh, if you have a tight spot to fit. In addition to determining the height of your panels on the side walls, it's very important to determine how far back they need to be as well. So one of the tricks you can use is a trick we call the mirror trick. Uh, you can get a friend to uh, hold a mirror on the wall, on the side wall, and while you're seated at the mix position, have them move the mirror along the wall, and the point at which you can see the reflection of the loudspeaker in the mirror, right there, that's where we want to put our foam panel. The next place to turn our attention would be the side walls. And the primary concern here would be the height on, uh, on the wall uh, where you should place the panels. We don't want to waste our absorption by placing it too low on the, on the wall uh, near the floor, nor do we want to waste any, any treatment by going up very high. Uh, the reason for this is because uh, we want to keep most of the panels uh, centered roughly at ear level, uh, because that'll give you the, the, the biggest perceived benefit. Um, if, however, once your, your room is finished, uh, you do notice some, some room ring, maybe some flutter echo. Oftentimes that can be caused by untreated areas higher up on the wall. But those can be easily uh, uh, remedied by just some spot treatment. So typically you might want to start maybe one to two feet above the floor as the, the place for your bottom panel. And as we've done here, we've left some space between the panels. Uh, this has some, some benefits besides aesthetic ones. Obviously, it, it looks really nice. You can create some good, uh, some interesting designs. But also, by spreading out the absorption, you actually increase the amount of absorption you can get from a given number of panels. So we could do a similar pattern to what we have here already and maybe leave um, four or five inches between a panel and then another panel up here. All right, we've talked about where to place the studio foam and the base traps in your room. The final component that is often included in a room treatment is diffusion. Here we have an example of our the Oralex T-Fuser diffuser, uh, which comes in the Deluxe Plus kit. And uh, similar types of uh, guidelines uh, apply also to the diffuser when you're talking about placement. Again, we're looking at not placing it too high or too low on the wall. And in this case, it's most often going to go on the back wall behind your mix position. So a good place to start, again, is maybe two feet above the, the, uh, the floor. And uh, as, in, as is common in many uh, control rooms, there's usually seating on the back wall. And so uh, that usually is kind of a built-in guide 
in terms of how high you'll place the diffusers. So in a case like this, we might start just a little left of center, and then we'd place uh, maybe an array of four or six diffusers on the back wall, just like this. Uh, with the T-fuser and with uh, actually other Oralex diffusers, they have a pattern built into them. Uh, and so it's important to make sure that the diffusers are not placed uh, identically with regard to the, uh, the pattern in the diffuser. So in a case like this, if we were going to install a second T-fuser next to this one, it would be good to rotate this T-pattern like this. This will increase your diffusion and increase the randomness of the surface on the back wall. Uh, as far as uh, some additional tips, uh, the T-fuser has a, a ridge around the back into which you can insert a semi-rigid absorber such as the Orlex Sonifiber panel. You can insert this, you have to cut it, but uh, it fits perfectly into this lip. And this will increase the range of diffusion and actually make your diffusers act as an absorber as well, so you get some additional absorption from the device. Um, as far as the other, the other placement uh, consideration is, how far back is this going to be from your mix position? Um, if you're in a really small studio where you may not have the luxury of, of perhaps 8 to 10 feet or more behind your mix position, then it might be a good idea to, to go without diffusion and simply absorb the back wall with studio foam.